there's war films and then there's Dunkirk. Not quite up to the hype created around it, but definitely worth the shekels spent to see it in a theater. Let's explore. Hello everyone and welcome to the Freedom Alternative. Alright, so I went to see Dunkirk because our friends on the far left said it's triggering because it celebrates masculinity, it has only white people in it and very few women. Well, it's a World War II movie, so what did you expect? cried the reasonable reaction. Sure thing, but in the current year historical accuracy in art is no longer so common. The BBC, for instance, is trying hard to convince us that the Roman Empire looked like modern-day Paris. So you'll excuse me if I appreciated knowing beforehand that at least in some respects I was going to see a movie about World War II that demographically looks closer to reality rather than progressive fiction. Anyway, so let me try my best to review it without spoiling it for you, but also perhaps convince you to watch it too. So, I was saying in the intro that there are war movies and then there's Dunkirk. And that's because this is atypical in almost all regards. Most war movies, or at least most of war movies that I have seen, tend to have a, let's call it a classical narrative timeline, in which you're being given some of the background story of the main characters, and then once you know their motivations, you're taken through the story, which in the process also develops the characters even further. Now, that's not a bad thing, but it isn't necessarily a good thing either, it just is. Now, Dunkirk, however, is different. In the first several minutes of the film, it isn't even clear what the characters are, and even after it becomes clear, the focus is almost never on the characters, but on the realities of war. Basically, Nolan tried, and succeeded in my humble opinion, to tell the story of Dunkirk and not the story of a particular character. Now, this is regarded by many, I would say women and leftists, if I were to be mean, as an issue with the movie, an issue per se. Now, there are tons of critiques going along the lines of, well, the film lacks emotional firepower due to the absence of a strongly written protagonist, and also there is little dialogue in it, or something to that effect. Now, I will argue exactly the opposite. It is precisely because it doesn't have a strongly written protagonist that the movie is good. Put simply, Dunkirk does what art was supposed to do, up until postmodernists came around and messed things up. It tells the story of an event and a civilization under siege, while focusing on the wide picture and not on the small personal details of one protagonist. In any event, to claim that the movie lacks the emotional firepower is Really funny, considering that actual survivors from Dunkirk say it is a highly realistic depiction of what happened, including the emotional message. What the movie does lack is the usual predictability. I mean, you know f uh, from history, or should know, how the movie is supposed to end, but there aren't many moments during the movie when you can accurately predict what will happen next. If I am to be completely honest, the movie is an emotional roller coaster, but only if you know a thing or two about the war and about what it takes to be a soldier. And herein lies the rub. In the current year, most people don't. The closest thing to even thinking about the military for most people today is a conversation about trannies in the military, and that's only because Donald Trump tweeted about it. So in a way, this movie came in the wrong year and the wrong culture in a way, because otherwise the movie is very timely, considering the era. All right. 
So the movie follows three separate stories that each last a different time and then uh, unites them. So there is the mole, which is the narrative thread that takes a week, the sea that covers a day, and then the air that covers just one hour. And these three threads are interwoven in what filmmakers like to call non-linear narrative. <clears throat> This is also not very common for war movies and it takes increased focus and attention span to get it, which is another thing that is no longer so common in the current year where anything longer than two minutes or 120 characters is just too long. But what makes this film really good is the fact that it portrays the common situations of war a lot more realistically and a lot less sensationalist. Which is why you should try to see it in a theater, because most of what is done with proper sound levels, which are harder to perceive on a TV set. For instance, most war movies make the sound of bullets to be a part of the routine of the movie, and their sound is kept relatively low and somewhat repetitive, but not in Dunkirk. In this film, the sound of bullets is very, very loud and not repetitive. Now, this is not... Uh, just to differentiate between various types of guns, but it also is to create a realistic atmosphere of war, of war where, you know, every bullet uh, matters in the sense that any bullet could cross through someone's skull. Same with uh, the aerial images. The bullets fired from one plane uh, to the other are louder than the usual level on similar scenes in other war movies, also creating the same feeling, feeling that every bullet could be the decisive one that either takes down the enemy or takes down the protagonist, possibly killing him since the aerial fight is taking place above water. Basically, this movie invites the viewer to immerse himself into the realities of war as it was then, though most of the issues do apply to uh, modern warfare as well. One interesting aspect to this, which I understand it was deliberate and a conscious decision, is that you almost never see the Nazis. You only see the Nazis during the aerial battle scenes uh, where you get to see some Luftwaffe planes, but that's pretty much it. Otherwise, you don't see the enemy, which is relatable to those who know a thing or two about war. In most situations, you're quite literally fighting an unseen enemy. And the movie stays true to its mission to right up to the very end. The closest you get to seeing some authority is a commander who coordinates the evacuation from the mall. But that's pretty much it. You don't see Churchill, you don't see generals, you don't see war rooms. All you see is the perspective of the little people, civilians and soldiers. You know, those who actually bear the brunt of any war. And you see something else too, especially during the second um, narrative thread, the sea. You get to see the determination of a people willing to save its civilization. And you get to see one of the finest representation of hope, but not hope in the hope and change or fluffy stuff, no, 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 but capital H hope in a very, very metaphysical sense. Now, I do admit, admit that this movie is not for everyone, and I understand why many find it <coughs> unengaging, particularly, as I said, women and leftists, because the movie portrays values and portrays the will and determination, things that are simply alien to the so-called mainstream culture of the current year. But nevertheless, I dare to think that this audience is very likely to appreciate it. Also, it has very, very good visuals, though it has several noticeable goofs in this department. You get to see the camera crane a few times during the video, but all in all, it's a very, very good piece. As I said, not really extraordinary, but remarkably good film for sure. Now, I don't buy the hype that I've seen uh, some people promoting that it's a movie that comes out once a decade or rare. Come on, it's not that good. Although I do understand where that attitude uh, uh, is coming from. I mean, considering how much filth Hollywood has been pumping out, even with all of its imperfections, Dunkirk surely stands out as a beacon of sanity. So, on visuals, 8 out of 10. Script, definitely 10 out of 10. Casting, eh, 6 out of 10. Lots of acting mistakes and imperfections. And music, definitely 10 out of 10. I mean, the music pretty much makes uh, 
most of the atmosphere. I mean, without the without those sound effects, without that music, um, it would have been indeed a highly imperfect movie. But because of the atmosphere created via the sound effects, you don't really notice that the movie doesn't have much dialogue because it shouldn't. So um, yeah, mixing all these two, that will be 8.5 out of 10. That's essentially my final grade. And again, definitely worth watching it in a theater and not at home over headphones or on a TV set. Right. And with all of that being said, I hope I convinced you to go watch the movie. And if you have seen it, please tell me in the comments how you perceived it. And I'll see you all very soon on Freedom Alternative.